Alright guys, this video is in response to a couple of questions now that I've received about early bolt action rifles. Specifically those in the late black powder to early smokeless powder era. And basically what they're wanting to know is why was it not blatantly obvious to early firearms manufacturers to have a bolt's locking lugs at the bolt face and not at the breech. And being the number one black powder aficionado on YouTube, I'm going to tell you exactly why. And the reason being is that the last place you want corrosive, gummy, gooey fouling, which is exactly what you get with black powder, is in the mechanism of the rifle. Think about these are pre precision machine parts that are fitting together over and over again as you operate or cycle the action. And once they get gummed up with black powder, which won't take very many rounds, that rifle is be going to become very difficult to operate, even in very sterile conditions. So they moved it as far away from that breech face as they could. And with early black or with black powder and some of the earlier smokeless powders, they didn't produce the pressures to make that a problem. You know, it was totally okay to have it back there. So then you might ask, well, why does the 1911 that was totally made for a high pressure, high velocity 7.5 Swiss round? have the locking lugs in the middle and I'm going to tell you exactly why because having the locking lugs in the middle here not only did it save them on production costs at the time but it is a much smoother operating mechanism than even like the K31 this bolt here is twice the quality of a K31 bolt it's smooth it was totally hand polished and look at the size of these locking lugs it has two locking lugs and it's bigger than my thumb. It's absolutely massive. And look at the rotation that you get inside of the receiver. And the Swiss receiver is every bit as nice in terms of the metallurgy as the bolts are. These bolts have been rated at 95,000 PSI. They are every bit as strong as modern bolts. I'd venture to say they're stronger than a lot of the uh, commercially made bolts out of you know bolt action rifles now like the cheap bolt actions that you get from academy that are just from no name manufacturers you know i would venture to say that this is even stronger than that even though they have you know maybe they've got a mauser style locking system or the modified remington you know style or whatever i guess that's still a mauser style but every company kind of likes to put their own spin on things to avoid copywriting issues but I would venture to say this is even stronger than that just because of the metallurgy and how the size of the bolts are like I said 95,000 PSI is what these things are rated at so if you have a 1911 that's head spacing well and all the parts look good shoot that thing it is safe do not be intimidated by the locking lugs being in the middle this is a very very safe mechanism so and the other thing it did for the rifle again it made it as smooth as glass I'm going to try, attempt to get a better angle. I talked and I showed a little bit of this in my other video, but I'm going to attempt to get a better angle like this. So let's see if it works. Alright, as I was saying before, this action is smoother than a shotgun action. And the camera, it's going to be really hard for you to hear me once I get going on this because it'll be loud. So what you're going to have to do is, is I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to lock the bolt back, and then I'm going to operate it. And I'm going to show you that all it requires is a good bump. And the bolt will go all the way into battery with just a good bump. I don't even have to push it all the way in. So it's as smooth as glass. See? sounds actually very similar to a shotgun. Very smooth action. The rounds are going to eject up and to your left. Whereas the K31, if you don't have a scope mount on the K31, because of its extractor, they usually come straight up. Sometimes they'll come back down your back and usually more to the right. But the 1911, because of its distractor, or its extractor, all the rounds go up and to the left. And it is as smooth as glass. So. But anyway, I 
I guess that's about it. I don't think there's anything else. I think I covered anything. Anybody curious about something? Let me know and I'll get you taken care of.